A parent messaged me asking about different strategies for subtracting in the thousands, so here's some thoughts on that topic. There are three main strategies I'm going to talk about, and then at the end I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the standard algorithm. I'm going to talk about incrementing, where a child can work their way up or down um, in chunks that work for them. I'm going to talk about combining like units, like working within the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, and then the ones. And I'm going to talk about a compensating or rounding strategy, where you adjust the numbers to make them easier, and then fix it at the end. All right, so starting with incrementing, we're going to do the same problem in multiple different ways today. So 5,208 minus 1,301. Um, and obviously this doesn't cover every scenario, so you'll have to think a little bit about how it would generalize for slightly different numbers. There's two ways we can think of subtraction, and one of the most common ways to think of it is as a takeaway. We start with 5,208, and we're going to take away 1,301 until we find out how much is left. So I might take away 1,000 and then 200 because that's a nice number, and then 100, and then I have one more left to take away, and I end up with 3,907. Now we can also think of subtraction in terms of a difference. How far apart are these two numbers on the number line? Um, and when I do this, I usually work up from the bottom. So I've got 1,301. I might add 99 to get to a nice round number, 600, 3,000, and then 200, and then 8 more. And then my, the thing I'm looking for is how far apart were these? What was the total distance I had to go to get across these two numbers? I've got the 3,000, I've got a 600 and a 200, and the 99 plus the 8 gives me the 907 total. So those are two different ways we can think of uh, subtraction, either as a takeaway situation on top or as a different situation on the bottom. And you'll see that the answer is in two different places because we're thinking of it differently. All right, the next strategy I'm going to talk about is combining like units. This is a common strategy kids will invent. All of these are strategies kids will invent. Um, and this is a common one. So this is going to look a lot like maybe you've seen this subtraction problem set up when you were in school, but we're going to work it out a little differently. We're going to start with the left side, the biggest values, instead of starting with the right side. So I've got 5,000 minus 1,000, and that gives me 4,000. I've got 200 minus 300, and kids might think or write about this in different ways. I'm going to write it as negative 100, but kids might just think, I know I need to still subtract 100 more. Um, so they're going to combine these and end up with 3,900 or 3,900. I don't really have to worry about the tens place um, for this problem. And then 8 minus 1 gives me 7. I've got 3,907 total. All right, so there I worked within each place value and worked out the values and then combined them at the end. All right, finally, let's talk about compensating or rounding strategies where you make adjustments and then fix them at the end. I want to remind you of the two different ways we could think of subtraction. On the top, we've got this takeaway version of subtraction, and on the bottom, we've got this difference version of subtraction. I can do compensating with either, but to me, it's a little easier to keep track of with the difference way of thinking about subtraction. So let's think through our problem. We've got 5,208 minus 1,301. We're looking for that blue bracket there. How far apart are those two numbers? But those numbers are hard to work with. So I might instead choose to work with something like 5,200 minus 1,300. And so that's where that's going to show up um, in the red on our number line. And that's an easier problem. And through whatever method I want, I might figure out that that's 3,900. But that's not quite my answer. It's very close to my answer, but it's not quite my answer. So let's look at what we changed so we can fix it. So I made the gap, right? The question is, how big is this blue gap? I made the gap a little bigger on the left side. I made it one bigger. But on the right side, I shrunk it. I pulled it in by eight. So all together, I shrank the overall gap from the blue to the red. It's seven smaller. So to figure out what the blue is, I have to add those seven back in. And then I end up with my 3,907. That strategy is in some ways a little more complicated. There's more to keep track of in terms of what I'm adding, what I'm subtracting, and how I'm adjusting at the end. But if it works for a kid and they're able to keep track of it, then that's no problem. And it's something a lot of kids will do for solving problems. All right, so we saw three main strategies. One thing people sometimes ask is, well, what about efficiency? We need the standard algorithm because isn't that the most efficient way to do things? Um, I want to highlight a couple things about this. First off, I think efficiency here is a misnomer. The so-called standard algorithm can actually be a lot less efficient in certain situations. So first off, for some numbers, it requires a lot of extra steps. Think about a problem like 1,000 minus 1. And if you do the algorithm many of you learned in school, there's a lot of steps if you're going to actually do it correctly. And so instead, one of these flexible methods is usually better. 
Also, it's more prone to errors. Kids and adults make more errors with this algorithm because it's not very intuitively, um, doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense to them, so they tend to make more errors. And so I don't personally consider that to be very efficient. Um, instead, I want us to think about efficiency as the flexibility to select a strategy that works. A, kid, a strategy that works in terms of the kid and a strategy that works in terms of the numbers. So that's something that works for the kid and that they can help them get the right answer. That's what's most important to me when I think about efficiency in terms of um, teaching math to kids. All right, I did say I'd talk a little bit about the standard algorithm. I have it in quotes here because there are, in fact, other algorithms that are taught around the world, and I'll briefly touch on one of those at the very end. All right, let's talk about subtraction with, um, many of you probably learned borrowing, but the terms used more often nowadays are subtraction with regrouping. So I've got the problem set up on the bottom as the way you would normally see it. And I've also got a visual representation of our total beginning amount, our 5,000, our 200s, and our eight ones. And we're gonna use that to talk through what's happening. So we start with eight minus one, no big deal. I'm gonna remove one of these blocks and I'll end up with seven, not a problem. Uh, the tens, or the, in the tens place, there's no values, zero minus zero, zero, no big deal. And then we get to the hundreds. We have two hundreds, and we want to subtract three of them, and we can't really do that without negative numbers, and this algorithm doesn't like negative numbers. So to get around that, we're gonna, many of you probably learned to sort of slash out this five, replace it with a four, and then put a little one here to make this a 12 on the top. Um, and we're going to do that, but I want to talk visually about what's happening. Part of what I'm doing is I'm splitting that thousand up into ten hundreds, and now I have plenty of hundreds to work with. I have twelve hundreds to work with on the top, and that's what that little twelve means. I can easily take away three of them, and I'm left with nine, which is no problem. So now I'm up to 907. And then finally, we're going to move on to the thousands place. We have 4,000 left. 4, left. We're going to subtract one of them, and we end up with 3,000. So we get our total of 3,907. Um, finally, there's another algorithm that is taught in other parts of the world. Um, so it starts out very similarly. We're going to work with the ones. 8 minus 1 is 7, no problem. 10s, not a big deal. 0 minus 0 is 0 10s. Now I get to the hundreds where I have my issue. And I'm going to do the same thing to the top where I add uh, 10 hundreds to it. Um, but instead of adjusting the 5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1,000 to the bottom right here and make that a 2. So now I still have 12 minus 3, which is 900, no big deal. And then I've got 5,000 minus 2,000 is 3,000. And if we think about what I've really done here is I've added 10 hundreds to the top and I've added 1,000 to the bottom. So I kept the difference between them the same. All right, so those are a couple different, and then we end up with our same total, 3,907. So those are a couple different ways of thinking about subtraction. The three strategies at the beginning are really the most common ones that kids will invent on their own, and kids should have plenty of time to work with those types of strategies before being taught the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm hides a lot of the math, and it really works opposite of the way most kids think. Most kids will start with the largest place values, which is really good because it gives you a rough idea of what your overall answer is before you get into the nitty-gritty details. Um, so they should have plenty of time to understand those, and then when they do work with the standard algorithm, it should be taught as just one more strategy to think about and play with. All right, thanks a lot. Please send me your math questions about this video or anything else at mathematfk at gmail.com, or leave a comment on this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Math's not a problem with math.